Hi, it's Vicky here and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I will be working on this uh, wooden panel. Uh, what I'm going to do today is going to look as if it is a shadow box, but you can definitely recreate it on a canvas or even on one of those boards which are nice and hard. So today we are going to have uh, fun playing with molds and I'm going to first show you all the molds that are included in my new collection. So this is one of them that has that uh, tea set. You will get uh, lovely teapots as well as lots of cups and stack of cups. And you can see some examples here. If I'm allowed to have a favorite from my collection, this is definitely the one. Then here is another one with lots of flowers, leaves, as well as butterflies. And uh, this is really versatile because you can use flowers, leaves and butterflies in pretty much every project. You can see some examples here. And you don't have to think uh, really difficult and complicated projects when it comes to molds. It doesn't have to be a shadow box or a canvas. You can definitely work on smaller scale, like for uh, creating a little tag, for example. So here is a tag that I made using flowers and leaves from this mold. Then there is this one which I call medallions and it's going to give you big focal points for your projects with a hotter balloon, a tiny house in a cup as well as this adorable cat. And uh, now this is one which I absolutely love because I find it very versatile, full of clocks. Here are some examples that I did so that you can see how it looks and I need to use them in one of my future projects. So finally, this is the mold that we are going to use today and I'm going to go for the hot air balloon. So let's start and first of all, I'm going to bring in one of the papers from the 12 by 12 paper pad from my Welcome Home collection. And this is going to help me create the background. There are many backgrounds that you can use for the exact same technique. I decided to go with this one. Now, what you need to do is to use your scissors and cut out random squares and rectangles that you don't measure at all. This is a technique that I have been using for years and you can use it for creating backgrounds inside your journals as well as for bigger uh, projects like the one that I'm going today to do today. Now, uh, notice that I'm not using a paper trimmer. I'm just using my scissors. I'm not measuring anything and I will end up with many of those squares or rectangles at the end that I can use for my background. Now, I measured the size of my frame and I cut out a piece of white cardstock. And by the way, this is heavy watercolor paper and I'm going to work on that. I will create everything here and you can see this is really thick and then at the end all I have to do is to just stick it inside my frame. Now I'm going to use my mixed media glue. You can use any type of glue that you like. Uh, gel medium would work perfectly for this technique and I'm going to stick all those pieces randomly on top of my page. Now I don't care if the letters are upside down. I don't care if they are overlapping. Actually, I want all those spaces to overlap since they are going to give me even more dimension at the end. So just uh, stick everything down and don't worry if something goes outside of the bait. You can always uh, use your scissors and cut out any excess paper. Also, make sure that you go over the pieces with your uh, mixed media glue or your matte glue or whatever you are using to make sure that you seal them nicely down. So once everything is dry, you can use your scissors and chop off any excess paper that you have. And now you can leave your background as it is, or if you want to knock it down a little bit, you can definitely go over it with a little bit of a primer or a gesso or even white paint. So I'm going to use a flat brush and I'm going to apply it uh, very thinly over some of the areas. I'm not going to cover it up completely and I don't want to lose what I have in terms of uh, visual texture there. So if you're wondering what is a primer and what is a gesso when it comes to paper, they are exactly the same. You just want to use primer when it comes to uh, applying uh, paint over um, a mirror or uh, over something very non-porous, glass or metal or even plastic sometimes. 
Now let's add some texture and I'm going through my stencils. I decided that I'm going with one of the older stencils from my first collection and I will go over the project by using volume paste. I'm going to apply the volume paste in uh, different parts of the project. You cannot see anything now since uh, it is white over quite of a light background, but they are going to show later on with the techniques that I'm going to do. I'm going to bring all that texture into life. So I'm going to show you a close-up of how the background looks at the moment. Hopefully you can see all the texture that I got from the tiles as well as from the stencil. So I left that aside to dry and in the meantime I'm going to create my hot air balloon. For today I'm going to play with resin and before you pour resin on a mold make sure that it is leveled. My best thing to do when it comes to leveling those molds is to just use my ink pads in the four corners so this way I know that it is uh, completely leveled and I can go ahead and create my mix. I'm using two parts resin, both parts has to be equal and I'm just using the measuring on the outside of my silicone cup and I will just go ahead and start stirring. You need to make sure that those two parts are very nicely mixed otherwise it's not going to cure. So uh, while I'm mixing let me tell you a little bit about the resin that I'm using. This is going to dry white, but it is going to dry super quickly, like in less than 10 minutes, so I don't have to wait for it overnight. Also, while I am playing with the resin, I always go ahead and mix more than I actually need, so I can pour in other little bits and pieces. In this way, I will end up with way more elements to have them handy for other projects. So here is where you can see how it is curing from the center towards the outside, and of course it needs to be all the way white before you try to take them out of the mold. Now there are many other ways to use the molds. For example, you can use ceramic powder with water, you can use clay, you can use your hot glue gun and I'm planning to make a video for that. By the way, look at here how pliable it is when you just unmold it. This is because it is still warm and uh, it isn't cured all the way yet. This is the benefit actually that uh, it is uh, pliable. It can uh, take the form of the object that you want to stick it on top plus it doesn't break which is not the issue when you use uh, ceramic or uh, clay. So uh, one thing that you can do is to just uh, trim off any parts that you don't like. So here, for example, I had some overpour and at this stage, since it is not fully cured and it's still soft, it's super easy to cut out the excess with your scissors and make it nice and pretty. You see, I can even cut through it like butter. So now let's work on the hot air balloon since this is the one that I will be playing with. Now this is resin, so it is non-porous. I want this to be a porous surface, that's why I'm using a primer and I'm going to completely cover it up. But if gesso is what you have, just go ahead and apply gesso over your elements. It's going to work just fine and maybe you want to do a second layer. So once this is dry, I'm going to go ahead and start applying my acrylic paint. Now if I haven't used primer or gesso underneath, the acrylic paint when dries, it is going to peel off, which is something that we don't want. Now the acrylic paint uh, uh, grabs nicely on top of my hot air balloon. I started with an ivory color and I'm just going to cover up completely the balloon. And then I am switching to pale pink to uh, do some uh, details on the hot air balloon, so I'm just going to uh, color every other stripe, but this is where I decided that uh, that color is too pale and it doesn't give me the contrast that I was going for, that's why I will switch to another color of acrylic paint and that's pink. So again I'm going with pink on every other stripe and I'm just going to color it in. Nothing fancy here, just plain coloring and you can definitely go with a thinner brush if you want to have a better result. To have a better control of exactly where you are applying the color. Now this is just a first layer of color that I'm applying. This is not going to stay as it is for my finished project because I'm going for a vintage kind of look and feel. 
And that's why I'm going to do a lot more things on top of this balloon. However, depending on the style of your project, you can definitely just color it and leave it as it is. So I'm going to show you the easiest way to age this to make it look vintage. I'm just using my dye ink pad. And remember that I'm working on top of acrylic. The acrylic is porous, so it's going to take the dye ink nicely. I'm applying it with my brush, my blending brush, which is so soft and all that brown is going to go in between the nooks and crannies, which is exactly what I want. Now I am oversaturating that brown color as you can see, you can definitely go lighter if you like, but I want it to completely cover up what I have underneath, but don't worry, you are going to see all those colors again in a bit. So once I have everything there, if you leave it uh, aside for a while it is going to dry, you can wipe off some of the color just with your finger, but the best way to do that is to use a baby wipe. Make sure that your baby wipe is not super wet. So I'm going with that over the raised areas of the balloon and I'm just wiping off the brown color. Remember this is dye ink so it reacts with water and that's why I'm able to lift it but I'm not lifting any color from the nooks and crannies and this is what gives that dimension to my balloon. I think that it doesn't get easier than that when it comes to vintage projects. You just add all that shadow and it really brings up all the dimension on an element. And now let's go back to the background, let's work on it a little bit, add some color there. I'm going with turquoise and this is uh, Aqua Color by Stamperia. I like this spray because it dries permanent, but instead of spraying all over the place, I want to have more control of what I'm doing. That's why I will apply it with a brush. First, I'm applying a little bit of water to help that dilute even better. I'm letting the color do its thing, just let it run here and there. You can always use some uh, paper towel to wipe off any excess. And now I'm switching to another color and I think this is a green one. You will find everything I'm using uh, linked down below the description by the way, just like always. So I'm going to mix those two colors directly on top of my panel. And I like that this one is more muted, it's not as bright as uh, the previous one. Again, by having all those tiles, the color is going to grab on where the, the edges are, as well as where the volume paste is, and it's going to make it look more dimensional. You will see the look at the end. So here I'm making sure that both those colors are completely dry before I move on and add a third color. Since I am going for a more vintage look and feel, I want to add a little bit of brown and this is leather. So again I'm following the same idea, I'm not spraying directly on my panel but I rather apply some color here and there and then with the water I help that run all around. This is going to grab again on the tiles as well as on the volume paste. Don't be afraid to add color on your project, it's going to make a big difference, especially when you are able to uh, bring out all that texture. And you see how that happens, just beautiful. And of course you know that I love splatter, so I'm just going to add a few here and there, just to add some more interest on my background. And finally, and this is the finishing touch for the background, I'm going to ink up the edges with my coffee dye ink pad, just lightly all over. And I'm absolutely happy with how that looks, so let's go ahead and create our composition on top. So I'm bringing in those two decorative chips, these are again from my collection with Stamperia, Welcome Home, and I'm going to use a couple of uh, those clocks as well as a few of the flowers from the other one. Before I take them out of the board, I'm just going to lightly ink them up. And they are quite delicate, so be careful as you take them out. If they break, it's not an issue, you can always put them back together when you stick them on your project. Now I'm using glue at the back and I'm going to stick them on the leftover pattern paper that I have. This is the one that I used for the background. So it matches lovely the design and then I'm going to stick both of them and use my scissors to cut them out. 
This way I'm creating extra elements for my composition and uh, at the same time I had something interesting at the back of those uh, decorative chips and of course I think that uh, all the different styles that you can get just by using different patterned papers at the back. Now these backgrounds look very clean to me when you compare them with the background so just uh, make them a little bit more dirty with the brush. And now it's time to stick everything together. Here I'm using my um, super strong glue but you can definitely use your hot glue gun which is uh, uh, what I'm going to use in a bit. I will switch into that. I do have some flowers as well that I popped out from those decorative chips. Here I'm just using a scrap piece of that just to make sure that I have everything nicely leveled. A few splatters just over those elements again. Just touch a little bit of color so that they don't look as if they are completely different elements that I stick on top. I always like to have the same details on all the elements. And then with my hot glue gun I'm going to place the hot air balloon on top. And then I do have all the extra decorative chips, those leaves and flowers, which I'm going to use to embellish the um, uh, hotter balloon all around. You can of course use either your hot glue gun or um, glue to put all those little pieces down. And uh, keep in mind that these are not as thick as they seem, so you can easily use them on cards and other flat projects. So I like to use those in an art journal as well, they don't add too much bulk. I also had in my stash those paper flowers. I have uh, been holding on them in a drawer for uh, years, so it is about time to use them finally. And I'm just creating a couple of clusters on top of my composition and sticking everything with my hot glue gun just to make my life easier. Now I also want to have some uh, dimensional leaves and uh, this is why I'm going to bring in this pattern paper again from the same paper pad. I'm going to cut out a piece and use some uh, dies of leaves that I had in my stash to cut out leaves and I made sure that these dies give you small leaves so they match nicely with the size of my flowers. I'm going to ink them up just a little bit here and there and I'm using the turquoise color of the dye ink. This is going to bring everything together nicely and it's not going to dry as bright as it looks at the moment. And also I'm just going to brush really quickly here and there just randomly a little bit of that brown Again, adding details that, and colors that the rest of the project has so that they don't look as uh, completely different elements as I found them from another project and just stuck them there. So I'm just going to stick them here and there. For that I'm using again my hot glue gun, but you can definitely use your uh, glue, your liquid glue. And uh, I just realized that uh, we are about 18 minutes into this video, so this is getting super uh, long. I hope you don't mind. As it seems that people are more into quick and simple projects lately. So anyway, I'm just going to stick all these leaves here and there to embellish it a little bit more and then I'm using white acrylic paint with a dry brush and I'm going to do dry brushing. That means that I'm lightly touching all the elements that I stuck together like the hotter balloon, the decorative chips, even the leaves and the flowers. This way I end up having the same look and feel or the same detail on all the different elements and they kind of come together by having the same detail. They are now a part of the same composition. And I'm going to do that on the background as well, just to have a few brush strokes here and there, not too much. By the way, for this project you are going to notice that I'm not going to do something that I always do on my projects. I'm not going to add a motivational quote. And that's just because there is a motivational quote already on one of my cloaks that says, Time for happiness. And now I'm going to use a product called Serantica and the color is copper that I'm using here. It is a product by Stamperia. It is a wax, so I'm doing waxing, just lightly touching areas here and there. This is metallic and it's going to give a lovely shine that uh, blends lovely with the rest of the colors. And I will try to catch the light for you so you can see the detail. 
I also did add some white splatters which I forgot to film but they are there, trust me. So all that's left to do is to just stick that inside my frame. You can definitely color your frame if you like. I do have uh, glue at the back and this is going to stick nicely in there. I decided to leave the frame as it is and I'm absolutely happy with the result. This is going to decorate my craft room and here are some close-up photos where you can see all the detail. Links to everything I used can be found down below just like always. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. If you did, don't forget to leave me a comment and like the video, it really helps. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.